Because you know I don't mean this. Ever since we mentioned the surrogacy, all we've done is fight. Well, it's no wonder, really. It is very complicated. Excuse me. Look, as long as we all sit down together and talk through things, honestly, Izzy, I'm sure we can make it work. Mum's right, yeah? We all want the same thing. You're still up for it, aren't you, Kate? Yeah, of course I am. No, actually, Gary, we don't all want the same thing. Yes, we thing. do! There's so much fear and resentment under the surface. So, does this mean that you don't want a baby no more? Oh, not now, sweetheart. Of course I do. Just not like this. Too many people could get hurt. I really want to do this for you. I just want to make you happy. I will never forget that you're willing to put yourself through all that just for me. But I can't let you do it. It's not fair on you and it's not fair on Chesney. Might as well just chuck it in the bin. We're taking it back to the shop so we can get a refund. Of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. We need all the money we can get, Tommy. I know, but like I said, I'm sorry. So you two got a bell. It's Kirsty, isn't it? She won't give an inch. But what's happened now? We tried to make the peace, you won't have any of it. Would you blame her? We got that for the baby and a card. Yeah, it costs quite a bit. It's not like we've got the money. Well, I don't think that's going to cut it, man. Well, I've apologised that many times, Jason. I've lost count. What more does she want, blood? Are you for real, Tina? Well, just shut it, will you? We've had enough aggro today. Well, if you can't take it, don't be doling what's it out. supposed right, to me? Stop it, you two. You're beginning to sound like a couple of kids. I can't believe it's come to this. We used to have a laugh, and now look at us. Yeah, well, it's a good job we're going our separate ways, isn't it, eh? We've got nowhere to go, Jason. Well, Maria said I can move in with her, so I'll be out of here as soon as I can. Good for you. Well, I'm just saying, you better get yourself sorted. Soon the better. Oh, here she is, trouble with a capital T. I've got a proposition for you. Why does that worry me? How do you fancy earning yourself a few quid? Don't tell me. Someone's disrespected you and you want me to take him out. <laughs> you cheeky beggar. Well, go and dust off me, who's he? Come and do a few hours for me at the Rovers. I mean, crate shifting, that sort of thing. You're totally off your trolley. Stella went ballistic last time you invited me around. You know, she swanned off and I've got a mutiny on my hands. Sean's neither use nor ornament. Hmm. I don't know. Stella made herself pretty clear, you know. Give us a hand, Carl. Help me out. You know, Stella can't resist a knight in shining armor. No. Could do with the money right enough. Have a shower and a shave first. You look like a caveman. Hey, what are you still talking to me about? It's not a crime, is it? Well, my mum said leave it alone. Why are you still pushing it? Oh, look, they were head over heels. Oh. It was exciting, passionate. Things like that don't happen every day. He's a liar and a cheat. Well, from what I've been told, you're not exactly Snow White. So sorry, Katie. I never meant to hijack your birthday. You OK? Mum, can we do the cake now? Um, I'm not sure now's a good time, sweetheart. Oh, please. Hey, Katie. I wrote your name on it in icing. Brilliant. It's a bit wonky, but I'm sure it'll still taste good. Why don't I help you light the candles? And then we can all sing happy birthday. Do you know, I have never known Kate to refuse a slice of cake, especially one with a name on it. Yeah, yeah too, right? You'll have to give her a big piece or she'll kick off. <laughs> you know you are unbelievable. Not now, eh? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Katie. Happy birthday to you. Oh, thanks, Faye. It's gorgeous. I think we're going to have to go in a minute, give Izzy and Gary some space. Yeah. Hey, Faye, why don't you come back to ours? You can help me bath the babies. But what about the cake? Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll do the cake tomorrow. Yeah. Come on. I don't know about any of you, but I could murder a pint. Yeah, and Katie cannot go home at this hour on her 18th. It's against the law. Yeah, get a round of drinks on me. Thank you. Ma'am, what are you doing? I'm wafting. You really need to lay off the wine. No, I'm wafting the toast smells up the stairs. I'm trying to torture your dad. He must be starving by now. Well, if that don't crack him, nothing will. <sighs> Any more of that sticky toffee pudding? Oh, well done, Ryan. I like a man with a huge appetite. <laughs> oh, that's you, isn't it, baby? Not mm. that uncomplaining. <laughs> well, there's no pudding left. 
But I'll tell you what I have got. Uh, Maron's glacé. What is that when it's at home? Uh, I don't know, actually. My mum won it in a raffle at the one o'clock club. Ooh, a family heirloom, then. <laughs> nice French. I'm surprised Ken's not all over it. Candid chestnuts. Mm. You play Kongs with chestnuts, don't you? Not eating. <laughs> Here, Amy, take that to your granddad. Tell him Grandma says, I hope it chokes you. I hope it chokes you. Perfect. <laughs> right, well, this has been lovely. It's uh, time we went. Oh, you're not going to stay for any party games? Yeah, I think we've got Simon's uh, whoopee cushion somewhere. It's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you for your stuff, Marrow, Deirdre. Oh. Experience I'll never. <laughs> Hey, Ken. Hey, Angel. Uh. Oh, what a great night. <laughs> we should do it more often. Yeah. Oh. You said this is what you wanted. How do you just change your mind? Of course I want a baby with you. But it's not right for Katie to carry it for her. But it was her idea. Yes, yeah, she offered. I'm worried she's doing it for the wrong reason. Uh, she's your sister and she loves you. What better reason is there? She feels guilty because I use this thing, and it's not her fault. And I won't have her do something as momentous as carry a baby for us out of guilt. No, those are your dad's words, not yours. Well, maybe he was right all along. I just didn't want to admit it. Katie's not stupid. She knew exactly what she was letting herself in for. She's only just turned 18, and she's a mum already. Her and Ches have been forced to grow up too quickly, and now we're putting this on them as well. It's too much to ask. It's like that counsellor said today. What if Katie had the baby, but she couldn't bring herself to hand it over? No, that'd be cruel. Katie's not like that. I'm not saying she'd do it on purpose. In her head, she'd know it was ours. But her heart might say otherwise. She'd fall in love with it, bond with it. How could she not? But that is not going to happen. Please don't do this. You have no idea what you've done. Enlighten me. By binning my hot pots, you have created a very unsavoury atmosphere back in that kitchen. Drains playing up, are they? You have offended our Betty. And by God, our Betty knew how to hold a grudge. Dead or alive, I won't want to cross her. You made the stuff, not her. Yes, but every time I make a batch, I commune with her. In my head. You can get pills for that. Hey, Gloria, where do you want these crates? Stick them in the cellar, will you, love, Tar? Right you are. Please tell me that is not who I think it is. It's Norris doing a butch voice. Tell her we'll kill you. Well, you're no use to me, are you, chucking your hissy fits and carrying on? I have never, ever had a hissy fit in my life. I asked him to help out, so shoot me. Same again, please. Hey, Bertha girl, why don't you try something a bit stronger this time, yeah? No, you're all right. Oh, it's your 18th, lovey. Why don't you try something a bit more exotic? I think we've got some cocktail umbrellas in the bureau. I'll stick to my half lager, thanks. Right, I'll bring them over. Happy birthday, my backside. Seen lively awakes. Sorry, love. It's not been the most memorable birthday ever, has it? <laughs> it's been memorable for all the wrong reasons. I just feel so sad for Z and Gary. Look, you should just put all that out of your mind now. It's not your problem anymore. You're panicking. That's what this is. Things are moving too fast for you, and you're panicking. I really wish that's all it was. But this isn't just about you. Yeah, this is massive. This is the biggest decision that we're ever going to make. And what you're seeing right now is going to affect us for the rest of our life. I know. Listen, ever since Katie said she'd do this for us, my mind's been working overtime. Yeah, it's got a real grip on me, all this. He has me as well. When I was in the army, I saw some terrible things. Yeah, and I've, I've got stuff in my head which I pray to God weren't there. But just imagine seeing the world through the eyes of your kid. Yeah. Everything would be so exciting. It'd be brand new. Now, you've seen Chesney with Joseph, yeah? It's amazing. It, it's made a man out of him. And what about Tyrone? Yeah, he's been desperate to see his little girl. But it's all right for them. Kids came easy. I just see the connection that mums and dads have got with their kids. And I know... I know that's what I want. Are you really going to take all that away from me? I'm so sorry. 
Thank you. Must say you don't look so clever. Fine. You look like a lost soul. Everything's gone wrong. My life is a massive disaster. No one wants to know us anymore. Can you blame them? After everything that's happened? Do you know... The first time I clapped eyes on Kirsty, I knew she was going to be trouble. Well, I'm sure she'd say exactly the same thing about you. And now everyone's taking her side over mine. You should see the way people look at me, Rita. It's... It's like they hate me. Nobody hates you. They're annoyed with you. Disappointed because, frankly, your behaviour has been appalling. We fancy pushing her like that. You should thank your lucky stars everything turned out fine with her and the baby. You know it was an accident. Oh, yes. The latest in the long line. Oh, you're a stubborn article. You won't be told. Well, she won't accept my apology. What more can I do? Stay away from her, as I've told you a hundred times. This is a great result for Kirsty, isn't it? Playing all innocent, playing the martyr. Listen to yourself, Tina. All that bitterness inside you, eating away at you. Is this the sort of person you want to be? You've got to let it go, love. Fancy another? Not really, no. No, me neither. What gets me the most? She mustn't trust me. Oh, of course she does. Don't be daft. Does she really think I'd let her down over something as important as this? She's just come to her senses, love. Realise it's too much to ask. Do you have to sound quite so smug about it? My son's had his heart broken today. I know, look, but I've been struggling with this for a long time, and you know that. And, yeah, I, I make no bones about it. I'm relieved, and I bet you are too. Sorry, but I am. <laughs> you offered to help them because you're lovely and you're kind. But helping them would have harmed us, me, you and Joseph. Yeah, well, I don't want to know, does it? <sighs> oh, what are you doing here? I thought it was a day off. That's your mother. How was your spa day? Good, was it? Yeah, lovely. I'm totally blessed out. Ah, well, um, you should hang on to that feeling, Stella, cos it won't last very long. Er, uh, Sean, kitchen, explain. Uh, I just got him to do a bit of cooking for me, that's all. Oh, why? The fridge is full of hot pots. Oh, no. You are joking. I told you, in no uncertain terms, to stay away, Carl. Now, don't get narky, Stella. Carl has saved my life today. What do you mean? I've been that busy, I didn't know which way to turn. I mean, sciatica was giving me jip. Oh. Sean's been playing up. Oh, that's right. I was playing someone else. Nothing's ever your fault, is it? Well, you see, that's the thing about Carl. I mean, no matter how many little blips you've had in the past, he's always there when you need him. Come hell or high water. Sorry, but I should go. There's always a conspiracy between you two, isn't there? Oh, I've had enough. No, look, stop. I don't you... want to hear it, Carl. Just go. How could you invite that snake back into my home, my business? You made such a wonderful couple. He made you happy. He put a smile on your face. Oh, yeah, until he cheated on me and broke my heart. Well, broken hearts can be mended. No, not this time. You'll be sorry when you're old and lonely, passion just a distant memory. Oh, for God's sake, Mother, that's enough. Oh, I travel all this way to see you and that's how you talk to me. You know, in Spain, they know how to respect their elders. Well, go back to Spain, then. All oh, right, I will. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's it, then, is it? Hasta la vista, baby, and not so much as a buy your leave or nothing. Right, then, I'm going. You'll never see me again. Adios, mother. It's time to face facts. All right, take it a teeny bit longer than I thought it would, but... No, I have had enough. Right? I'm knocking it on the head. Well, with, with that close to breaking her, I can feel it in me bones. The darkest hour comes before dawn. I 
worried about your love. Where is he? He's upset. So are you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sweetheart. You have no idea how grateful I am. And I have no doubt in my mind that you have made the right decision for Katie. But it's not the right decision for Gary, is it? He hates me. Oh, don't be daft, love. He could never hate you. I will never be able to give him what he wants. He breaks my heart. I know this sounds harsh, but we don't always get what we want in life now, do we, eh? But he really wants to be a dad. And what right have I to take that away from him? I know. Is he still here? Oh. Listen, I'm sorry about before. I shouldn't have gone off on one. You take it easy, OK? Don't do anything rash. Right, I'll be going then. OK. Out into the blue yonder. All alone in the night. Bye, Mother. Take one last look at this face. You might never see it again. We seem to have it all worked out. You and Dennis, you seem so happy together. We're very lucky. And so are you. You and Tommy are made for each other. A few months back, I would have agreed with you. I couldn't have been happier. But now... We do now but argue. Well, you're under a lot of pressure. And times are tough at the moment, but they will get better. I don't see how. Everything's gone wrong and I don't know how to fix it. Listen, you and Tommy love and care for each other. That counts for a lot. Yeah, but it's not enough though, is it? We're out of our depth, Rita, and I can't see a way out. No. Why don't you come and stay with me tonight? Oh, what about Tommy? Well, I'll phone him and tell him you're safe. Okay. I shouldn't have kicked off like that. You know me. Always been a hothead. You did nothing wrong. I was just shocked, that's all. But give me a bit of time. I'll get over it, I promise. You shouldn't have to. And so what if we can't have kids? Yeah, we've got each other. That's all that matters. Gary. You remember what I said to you when I had the miscarriage? Well, this is different. I said that if you have the chance to have a family with someone else, you should grab it with your hands. And I will tell you what I told you then. No, because I want you. But I can't live with you resenting me for this. That's not going to happen. I love you. What if you wake up in ten years' time and blame me? There you go. That's my answer. I know it... You don't believe me right now. But one day you'll thank me for this. Please don't leave me. Please. When you're celebrating your kid's first birthday, teaching it to swim, seeing it take its first few steps, you'll look back to this day and you'll know that we did the right thing. Please. You see, please. <laughs> right then, best go and pick my ladder up from your mum's if we're running a racket. Yeah, well, I'll keep her on her toes. <laughs> Max likes having him around, you know, he looks up to him. Yeah. Just 
broke a fingernail ringing your doorbell. Where are you off? G&T, if you will. Make it a double. Go easy on the tonic. <laughs> Me and Stella have had a falling out. Oh, what? About Carl, I suppose. His name may have been mentioned. Don't tell me she's chucked you out. What can you do? You do your best to spread joy, peace and harmony. And then what happens? Well, I told you to leave it alone. Would you listen? Don't gloat, Leanne. It's very unattractive. Have you come to say goodbye, then? Not as such, no. Um, I was just hoping. Oh, no. Sorry. It's not even my flat. Thank you, Nick. My lovely surrogate grandson-in-law. You wouldn't begrudge Leanne's gran a bed for the night, would you? Don't put him on the spot like that. Well, look, I know you and me got off on the wrong foot, but all the more reason to try and put it right. I don't know how long I've got left on this planet, but I want to put those years to good use. I want to spend time with my family, you, Nick, and little Simon. Oh, right, fine. I'll go and make up the spare bed then. <laughs> good girl. It's true what they say, isn't it? As one door slams in your face, another one opens. <laughs> you young lady have taught my legs up tonight. It's time you went to bed. Come on. <laughs> hey, Gary. She's gone, Mum. Um, go on, Faye. Go and get your gym jams on. I'll go bring your drink up in a minute. You all right? No, go on, Faye. Go on, up you go. She's left me. I'm so sorry. I was going to have a family with the girl that I love. <laughs> and now I've got nothing. Oh, I'm so sorry. And we'll be back in Coronation Street next Wednesday night at 7.30. An unlikely relationship begins next in our new drama, but why is a 44-year-old married woman risking everything? Stay with us for leaving next.